touch on this for a moment. Shalom, Das Tafari. Um, this is a uh, uh, it's called Mariam Mitochondrial Eve, and this is the Kedistin Gamariam or the um, Holy Mother Mary, or called the Virgin Mary, but we caution in using that word Virgo because of the association with the counterfeit, the counterfeit Mary, the you know, or the creature, the sister of Caesar, Caesar Bogiers. And if you want to know more about that, check out our previous video on the two Marys, the Virgo Mary, and you'll see that in the doc vids. But here, we didn't touch on this before, but we were preparing for another shi'or or lecture or class. So in that preparation, we came across this picture and was reasoning on it. And we said, let's just share a little bit of this. Now, this is a, um, this is a word picture here, right? A word picture right here. As you can see, this is Africa, including um, Arabia, which is part of Africa as well, Arabia up here. Right, this is Ethiopia in particular, or modern Ethiopia, or secular Ethiopia. The Ethiopia, or in even uh, Gnosticoi or Awaki terms, the Prunicos, in other words, that, that wisdom that has fallen into the world. In the whole Gnostic sense, also, there's a prophecy in the, in the whole uh, Gnosis or the Gnostic sense. And we're speaking from the um, position of the, the nine saints of Ethiopia, you know, from, from their uh, crystalli you know, Christology, Christ Logos, Christ Messianic Moshiach Word, all right, Devar. Now, right here you see, this is, uh, this is one of the icons, the Ethiopian Orthodox or Tawahido, uh, Beta Christian icons or, or um, pictures of the Virgin Mother and Child, of Kedistin Gamariam and our Lord and Savior Shua HaMushia in their original, we we'll say, Ethiopic types. But now if you notice right here, the position of Ethiopia as per Revelation, Revelation chapter 12, where it speaks of... Um, the woman, that woman and the man-child, and that man-child is Lij Teferi. Now, we've been on the subject matter of Lij Teferi, or Lij Tefari, because this is the 120th year, and some say, well, um, so what? What does that mean? Are we waiting for um, His Majesty to return, or the return of His Majesty? Uh, you know, we don't know if one's being mocking, facetious, but we know that the Holy Spirit, the Memphis Caduce, is not guiding them. We're not saying it's not speaking to them, but they're not listening to that voice. And so we can even see proof of it, both in the spirit of it and in the truth of it, and, and actually what has happened concerning Libya. Now, Libya and the connection to this particular um, Edithin Glamardium, the Holy Virgin Mary, or the Black Madonna, the Ethiopian mother, and here, Africa, right? Now, here's the, here is Ethiopia, the man-child, Revelation chapter, chapter 12, right? And this is 2012, and we're speaking about the 12th cipher or the 120th year of Lij Teferi of the Son of Man. Let's see if we have, um, for those who might just be tuning into this one, let's see if we can... Um, uh, use this right here. This is a book that we're working on right here, uh, Tawahido Pocket Book. So you can get to see a preview right here. Here's Lij Teferi, right? Lij Teferi right here. Lij Teferi. Lij, Lij Teferi. Teferi, right? And Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, it says, it says, Ahzabinim Hulu, the Buret Better. You get that chosen, Yalawin, Lich, Wend Lich, Welledech, Lichwam, Wede, Egezi Abe Herina, Wede Zufanu, Teneteke, and the Turgum, or the translation of the Targum, it says, And she brought forth a man child, 
who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Now we've gone into a, a um, I don't say a deep or more detailed um, explanation and interpretation of this particular prophetic scripture as it relates to Lij Tefari or that chosen man child in fulfillment of Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. Now, that woman, often Christians will say, well, that woman is, is Israel, is, is Israel. Or others would say, well, the Jews or the Judahites or the Hebrews would have said, that woman is Israel. The Christians will say that is Kedistin Gamarium, who is the mother of the true and the spiritual of Israel. But now we have holy Ethiopia in that particular equation. Not today's pseudo Ethiopian or Habisha, Abyssinia, but true holy Ethiopia and the birth of that particular man child. Now you can relate this to also um, Amos. Um, the prophet Amos in the Nevim or the Nevim, the prophet Amos chapter 9 verse 7 where it says, aren't you like the Ethiopians, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? And there's other like there two places, Ethiopia, this man was born there. And on, on the whole question of even Zion, what is Zion? We know that there are Zionists today. And we know about the state of Israel, but even the true Torah-believing Jews, and many of them Messianic, and many of them even um, Rastafari, coming into that true consciousness of the fulfillment of this word and of the, the universal Moshiach, the true Messiah, in the light of the King of Kings, Kedamawi Haile Shalase, or Haile Selassie the first. So let's Continue on this. Why was the why was Libya so important? Well, we already touched on how, in, among a lot of pseudo Pan Africans today and black nationalists and others who um, part of that whole movement and everything, um, so called Afrocentric, a kind of a kind of a middle of the road on the fence kind of, you know, um, some of y'all might even be Afrocentric. You understand? And you really don't understand why we as Rastafari are Ethiocentric, because it's what Ethiopia represents in this true global or end times picture. You understand? And what we, see, Ethiopia represents that Judah, that, that the royal Yehuda, Moa Andesa Zaim and Negeda Yehuda, in the person of Kedamawi Haile Shilase or Haile Shilase the first, and we as the Lost sheep, you know what I'm saying, or the once lost but now found Beta Israel, so called Negroes, blacks, and coloreds, who are in a state of forgetfulness, you know what I'm like Manasseh, but really in blessing, we are part of that Ephraim. Ephraim. We're in this north country because Ephraim represents that north, the, the part of the prophetic, when you look at Ephraim and Judah in the prophetic books of Scripture. Now, there is an antitype. And that antitype is the state of so-called Jezreel or Israel, really more correctly scripturally Jezreel. So we have Hosea. We have the prophet Hosea where Hosea even speaks to um, Israel and says that they are like, he uses um, Jezreel. So it says, not my people. You know, where he says, lo ami. You understand? And a whole uh, uh, Ruhama, that whole connection that's very prophetic, all right? So... Why Libya and Gaddafi, when we saw these events um, unfolding and we saw the, the hand of the Lord in this particular manifestation, we, we, we recall this, this um, misale, right, this, this teaching example, looking at Kedistin Gulmarium, and now we're looking at the picture, not worshipping pictures or whatever, but the picture is an abstract. You understand? It's like, give me, draw me a picture. We say, draw me a picture. It's a teaching tool. Like in the scriptures, we have parables. Like it says, the woman, she was standing in the what? She was standing in the moon, right? The moon was at her feet. 
right? And she was clothed with the sun, and she had she had twelve stars at at, at her head. What, what what is this a picture of? You know, so some people think, okay, um, perhaps it's something in the sky. Well, there is a heavenly. There's a timetable that's in the heavens. We look and look at Virgo and and uh, and Regalis or, or 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 Leo constellation and a certain 2012 and future alignment that symbolizes a a potentiality of prophetic fulfillment of time and space. But see, what is it all waiting for? Are we waiting for God to return, or is God or the Moshiach waiting for us to grow up? To reach that spiritual, that true spirituality of the King of Kings and His Christ, and be in the true spirit and truth. I call it being up to ascension rate. So no matter whatever happens down here on this so-called earth, you know whether we have to endure the tribulation, whether there is a rapture or our good extraterrestrial so-called brothers or angels, you know, some are rescued, some are preserved. No matter whatever happens. We have to remember what the scripture says right here to us in the spirit of sonship. It says right here, for what? This is Romans 8 and 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage. We're not under the spirit of bondage. Again, to fear. You will tend to fear men and people. You understand? Because if you fear to speak up, if, if you fear to, to act on that truth, that means that whatever... Uh, men or people or worldly or demons, you ha you believe in them. Your faith is more in what they can do against your flesh. You understand? Instead of what the Almighty has already done for our spirit, soul, and our regenerated bodies. All right. So we haven't received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, legionet, becoming children, sons and daughters, what we call the Bani Ha Elohim. Whereby we cry, we cry, we shout, Abba, Abba, Father. You know, so, so there's a relationship, it's not that. You know, some will say Jah is the creator. Yes, Yahweh is the blameless creator. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You have to understand that the blameless one, his majesty teaches us that, that Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach, is our blameless creator. What is the relationship? What's the relationship there to him being our blameless creator? You understand? Because there is the first birth and there is the new birth. And through the new birth, which this adoption or sonship links to, you understand? Well, or, or the sonship is the link, right? Or it, it is the process of the, the, the when one is born again as they're born again now they're no longer um, children in the sense of disobedience of this world because we've all gotten conditioned or programmed or entrained or trained or psyched out or whatever you want to call it you know, to go along with this world so it's a the new birth it is not being conformed to the world, but being transformed by the renewing of our mind. So one can look at this picture and not really see the relationship to Africa. And we see Africa, we must include um, the Middle East. You know, saying this land mass here, which includes what's known as the Holy Land. But now notice the position of where Libya is in this equation. If we look at Libya, Libya would be somewhere right around there, that little point up there. Well, that's Tunisia. Libya would be right around here, right, right around here in Tunisia. So that broke out in Tunisia, right? You know, that whole Arab Spring thing, right? So there's a prophetic here. The Kedistin Gulmadium, the Black Madonna, reveals something to us right here, even by the iconography coming from one of the oldest churches or Christian communities in the world it, and that is speaking of holy Ethiopia, not today's modern secular landlocked Ethiopia. You understand? So we look at the position up here, we see the cross. Right? Now they say the Middle East is at a crossroads. Look look what's going on up here. Look at the position of the sun. So that right there in Tunisia, it affected what? On one end it affected Libya, but it also affected 
Egypt over here. So you see this cross goes into, it's like the four winds. It's going into the four winds. So this, um, this, um, I'll, I'll call it a revolution, but this spirit, you know what I'm saying? But then when we look at it a little bit deeper, you know what I'm saying? We see this as positive. There are some Pan-Africans which look at this as being a negative for Africa because they think of Gaddafi like a kind of a Christ-like figure. If anything, he's like a bar Jesus type figure. You know what I'm saying? It was a political sorcerer. And one thinks that something really went on, something was improving, and you, we don't see any of it. Where was it? They say, oh, the war bombed it all down. Well, there was war in other countries and other places where leaders, real leaders, you know what I'm saying? Not these Bedouin so called politicians whom the Quran says the Bedouin are the most severest of the concealers of what they know is true. And this is why Gaddafi was an enemy to the work of his imperial majesty. So when any so-called Rasta says otherwise and how they love his imperial majesty, they must not know of his imperial majesty or what his majesty stands for and what these other guys that they are comparing or even exalting above the king of kings. In fact, even Gaddafi called himself the king of kings of Africa. So we, we, knew, we knew he was done for anyway, we, even though we found out about that rather late. I think that was a couple of years ago. But now, notice the position of the sun. So we have the position of the sun, the man-child, right? We have the man-child or Christ, even Christ in his kingly character. And we have this head right here. So this is why this particular uh, Libyan and Gaddafi overthrow is a positive sign. But you see, there's a lot of folks putting out the negative, saying that, oh, you know, Africa was about to, Gaddafi was about to, he was about to, and he was just about to, and he was almost, and he was a man that was really going to bring Africa to, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's just a little bit too much, and it's not even real. It, it's a lie. You know what I'm saying, because they have turned their backs from the King of Kings. They don't recognize the true revolutionary Pan-Africanist, well, righteous African leader. You know, this is why a lot of other so-called Pan-Africanists, although what they talk about sounds to be the same thing like what we as Rastafari talk about, you notice that there's a difference concerning the person of His Majesty. Why is that? His Majesty was not a revolutionary? Are you, are you stupid? Are you ignorant? Are you kidding? You understand? Are you a mocker or a jester or a joker? Of course His Majesty is revolutionary. And that was, is, will be the same. You know what I'm saying? There's a revolution going on on a whole higher level, brothers and sisters. We're not going to even get into that right now at this particular moment. But we're going to show, we want to show you this right here, this, this um, relation to the art here and the symmetry when you start to interpret art right here and the relation right here to Africa and to Ethiopia and then also the recent events of the Arab Spring, you know what I'm saying, which is at that crown right there. Remember it says crown of 12, what, stars? Right? So far, how many countries, you know, have had some really crazy uh, shakeups? There was what? Uh, what was it? Liberia? Was in Liberia, the, Charles Taylor. They had that thing in um, Tunisia, right? Tunisia, that is two. Well, I think Tunisia was first, then Taylor. Then the e Egyptian thing with uh, Mubarak, right? Or Mubarak, right? And then there was the Gaddafi. Remember the Gaddafi thing? Now, some would say, well, what about, you know what I'm saying, what about this guy over here in Yemen? Either way, this is like, this is like what, three, four, four, five, four, five. We're not saying that that is the, 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 a third of the stars or, 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 you know, we're not saying that that's that right there. But it's interesting how there's a possible sign there. You know what I'm saying, a possible sign right there. But definitely what very clearly is a sign is the position of Ethiopia in the position of the Holy Child, of Yeshua HaMoshiach, of Emmanuel. And then I noticed this also in studying the picture. If we would look at this and now interpret the position of Africa vis-a-vis -vis the position of the Holy Mother, because remember this is the continent that is the mother. You understand that all these nations that's coming to rape and have raped her are actually, as Dr. Francis Cress Welsing said, are the, the real, excuse me if you find this offensive, but are the real mother expletive, deleted, deleted. You understand? They're the real motherfuckers. You understand? Because if you understand what that word F-U-C-K, we're fornicating under the crown of the king. 
you know, saying it was, this is his land. You know what I'm saying? He clearly has demonstrated that this is his land. Now, look at, the, look at the fingers of the child. The fingers of the child, right, are pointing where? They will be pointing to the west, right? Pointing, it's almost like he's looking as well. He's looking to the west. Overstand that. He's looking to the west, and that's to the lost sheep, to the diaspora, because much in what happens is really determined more on what decisions we make. You understand? It's like Moses said to them, you have before you life and death. You understand? He puts before you life and death. You always, you can choose the king of kings and his Christ. You understand? You can listen to the teaching of his majesty and, and pray and, and act on it in true faith. You understand? Or you can go with antichrist. You understand? You can go with Christ in his kingly character or you can go with antichrist. But that's a decision that all have to have to make and we want we want to say more on that but let's just touch on this once again just um tell me what you think about this right here you know because you look at some of the the iconography you over saying true in some pictures the child is on the the um the right arm you you notice that in some of the pictures but then i think if i'm correct from some of uh, Wallace Budge's uh, translation and writing, I think the Holy Child was actually on the left, right? It was on the left first. And then when the Jesuits came in, they brought in some iconography with the child on the left, I mean on the right side. So the child originally was on this, this side, right? Which is, which is, will be the, the left hand side, right? Just like this part the, the you know this part is 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 East Africa, but then they call it the Western Semites. You understand the Western Shemites. You understand like the Western Shemitic languages like Ethiopic and so forth and so on. So um, yes, my brothers and sisters, um, uh, Mariam Mitrochondrial Eve.